Hi, so in this video, I want to talk about triggers and I understand that some people out there think that the use of trigger warnings and triggers have happened, you know, more recently and it's sort of watering down the real experiences of people who have them from trauma in the past. I would suggest that it's really not a matter of whose trauma is more worth more or worth less. I think it's all important to understand. Triggers are very important to understand. We should be taking them very seriously. No matter if somebody says, oh, that's just a stupid thing to get triggered about. No, it's all important. Every single one of them is important and no more important than somebody else's. And I have prayed to get triggered in the past because of the great feeling that you can get when you actually accept your triggers. So in this video, I want to talk about what a trigger is and why it's so important. And to do that, I think I want to start at the beginning as a baby. If you believe in reincarnation, it could get a little bit more complicated than this, but otherwise, when you're a baby, you're sort of a clean slate in this world and things happen to you and you figure out, I don't like that, or I really like that, or I'm ambivalent towards that. So a butterfly flies by and you might think that's very pretty. Or a butterfly might fly by and you've had experiences where, you know, somebody swats it away and you think, or maybe it's a moth, right? And they think, oh, that's evil. You know, get that away from the baby. And in the future, now you're going to associate butterflies with that moth and be afraid of them. Think like those are nasty things that need to be taken care of uh, and you don't want them around children or something. We associate these things that happen in our past when we're very, very young. And if we like them, we want more of them. If you're ambivalent, it doesn't matter. It just sort of passes right by. Uh, so let's say you are this person and an event is coming towards you and you experience this event and you like it and you want more of it. You really desire it. It sort of sticks with you as something just sort of in your soul. Like, I really want more of this. It's usually a feeling of, I don't have this all the time and I want more of it. And so that sticks with you. If something happens and you're ambivalent towards it, it just sort of goes right through you. And you know, it's, you don't worry about it. And if something happens and you really hate it, you resist it and it sticks with you. So it doesn't move past. And so this is what happens with the things that we really want. You know, the word wanting is something like we found him wanting. That means he did not have that thing that we wanted him to have. Wanting is a form of lack. If you want something, it inevitably means that you don't have it right now. That's why you want it in the future. So wanting is something that you are desiring that you feel like you do not have right now. And you are afraid or angry if other things happen to you. So these things are sticking with you. And um, I'm trying to remember his name. <laughs> uh, the Surrender Experiment, uh, Michael Singer, he also did a video, I mean, a, a book about uh, untethered soul. And it is, he also did a video series about the Surrender Experiment. And that is what I watched, the video series. And it, it was a course. And I'll leave links below for his stuff if you want to research more into that. But he talked about samskaras. And that's basically what that trigger is. That's what I'm talking about. So as a blank soul or whatever, um, we have certain things that we want that come, you know, that we, we see and we think, I didn't have enough of that and I want more of that. That just sticks into our soul. And we have things that we really don't want to happen again. Uh, so whatever you get a very emotional charge about, whether you want more of it or whether you want less of it, that emotional charge is what keeps it inside of you. Because anything you're ambivalent about just passes right through you. 
and so you don't care about it and it's easy to come again it's easy to not notice it if it's not there that sort of thing and the reason and the law of attraction by the way somebody can say or think about something that they don't care about and have it manifest immediately is those ambivalent things that they don't care about. If you care about it, you have limited, um, limited beliefs about the fact that you can get that. So if you care about it a lot, you have a very big limited belief that you can't have that. Um, and that's why it's more difficult to manifest things that you really care about. Whereas it's much more easy to manifest things that you don't care about. Uh, it's because of these samskars that are inside. And so that's pretty much what a trigger is, is what you've got in the past is you've got a bunch of these samskars stored up in your soul and you are manifesting everything that you are resisting. So what you resist persists. And so all these samskaras that are in you of, I don't want this, and I don't want that, and I don't want this or that, those things inside of you are like calling it to you. And so that's why you're continually getting these things that you don't want to happen. As more as you focus and really, really don't want these things to happen, the more they do. Because the samskaras are in there wanting to come out and, you know, pass through you. So we've all got these things in the past that we really don't want to happen. And the only way to get rid of these samskaras is to feel them, to allow them to come to the surface and leave. Whereas, you know, first they were coming to the surface and digging into our soul. And we were probably more like grabbing onto it when we're like, oh, I really don't want that. Or I really do want that and feel like I don't have it. And what it's trying to do is come up and leave out the other side. So how does it leave? It has to, it has to draw experiences to you for you to feel this trigger for it to come up and bubble to the surface and just allow it to leave. So what's going on if you get triggered is that your body is saying, this is the perfect time for you to release this samskara. And most people continue to resist it. They're like, no, I don't want to deal with this. I don't want this at all. Why is this happening? And they just push it deeper inside of them so that the next time it comes up, it might be even worse. This is one reason why it is great to be triggered so that you can let it go. And then once you feel the feelings as it's rising to the surface and passing through you to leave, you're not going to, after it's gone, you're not going to continually attract these things that are going to get you triggered. And most people really don't want to keep attracting these things that are going to get them triggered, but they don't realize that by resisting them and getting angry that they got triggered, that they're actually keeping it and it's going to get worse and worse. And I would suggest that one reason why we have more and more people saying they've been triggered today than in the past, decades past, is because people are really abdicating their responsibility for dealing with their emotions and blame shifting their triggers onto whatever or whoever triggered them so that they will not deal with the trigger. Whereas in the past, we were a little bit more focused on personal responsibility and not so much blaming the other person. And we dealt with our emotions and we had this emotional maturity where we were dealing with why is this upsetting me and what can I do personally to make sure that this thing does not happen to me again in the future. Once you take personal responsibility, it frees you. I'll leave a link to my article on that below too. But so this personal responsibility is totally freeing, but people have not done that and they have sort of enslaved themselves to whatever or whoever triggers them. Because if you have somebody out there who is triggering you, like I would suggest Donald Trump is triggering a lot of people. And what that means is that they are willful slaves 
to whatever Donald Trump says, does, or does not do. And so whatever he does or does not do, and it's triggering them, it's like ruining their day. And the only reason it's ruining their day is because they have decided that they really care what he does or does not do. Because they have emotionally chained themselves to him to become a willful slave to what he does or does not do. And this goes the same for every trigger out there. If, if somebody or something in your personal life is really getting you upset, uh, maybe a neighbor's playing music too loud or something, when you get really upset about what somebody else is doing, it's because you become a willful slave to what they do or do not do versus taking the personal responsibility and saying, what can I do to make this situation better without having to rely on that other person changing their ways? Uh, you know, suggesting like moving away or calling the police on a noisy neighbor, things like that. You know, there are certain things that you can take personal responsibility over that would actually change the way things happen. Those are physical things that I mentioned. However, I would say through the law of attraction, you can actually change things by focusing on yourself and why are you attracting this? So with the samskaras, you know, if you are praying for to be triggered and you get triggered, then I would suggest you allow those emotions up, feel them. This is how you get rid of them, how you get rid of these things that are gonna attract these triggers to you. And so this is the perfect thing to do if you don't want other people, you know, getting you upset all the time. You know, this is um, where you can take your personal responsibility. And so I, it was a couple of weeks ago when I did a meditation in the game Plane, P-L-A-Y-N-E. It's a meditation game where there's a fox and there's a, a plane where there's trees and stuff and you, they grow as you meditate. Uh, the point was, I just realized that there was a guided meditation in there. Some of it's just uh, text on the screen, but this one actually had audio and I listened to it. It was one for acceptance. This is something I had learned already from Michael Singer's uh, video, but it was nice hearing it from a different perspective in plain. And the audio was basically asking you to come up with something that makes you feel uncomfortable, any kind of discomfort that you would feel and sit there and just notice it, accept it. Um, you can think about, this is something else I'm adding to it, but you can think about how is your body reacting when you're feeling this uncomfortable feeling? You know, is your heart racing, that sort of thing. So just noticing, it's just coming from a place rather than being, uh, rather than pushing against these things, this uncomfortability, uh, discomfort, it's nice to just sort of sit there and just observe. So it's from an observation. You could sort of like saying you're step, stepping back and just observing the feelings that your body is having, observing the thoughts that your body is thinking. And when you do that, it's allowing the samskaras to rise to the surface and leave. So I did that. And then that night I had a nightmare. <laughs> and because I, in the in the meditation, I should say this, is that I was thinking to myself after, you know, stuff was coming up and I was just sitting there in the meditation thinking about what else makes me feel discomfort. I couldn't think of something, but just by asking that question, you can get answers. And in my dream, it became a nightmare and I had a nightmare. So that was one place where I still had discomfort and these feelings were coming to the surface. So your nightmares, are great examples of where you have some discomfort and they're trying to rise to the surface and you could just wake up and want to get away from that feeling but I used it so I laid in bed and I was feeling the feelings and I was thinking about them and in this dream nightmare I had a friend a male friend it's not real you know some dream friend was asking me to get this box out of his house and he was in jail. And so I went there and I got the box and I came back to my house, which wasn't even this house, <laughs> so weird dream. But there was a box of drugs in a drawer behind something. And so I was thinking, man, my friend is uh, guilty. <laughs> uh, and my friend was gonna ask me to get rid of the drugs. So that he, you know, he realized that was the only way that the cops were going to 
be able to convict him. And I started getting paranoid. I was like, did the cops see me get this out of the house? Was this like entrapment? Were they waiting for me to get it out so that they could arrest me too, as if I knew about this thing? If I walk outside my house, are they gonna arrest me right now? If I try to return it to the house with the drugs intact, are they gonna be there waiting for me to watch me do it and think, am I planting something? <laughs> and you know, all these thoughts are occurring to me in the dream and I'm like freaking out, just paranoid. And I realized while I was laying in bed after I was awake, I was realizing this is not fear so much as it's paranoia. And it's nice to be able to consider what you're feeling and actually put a name to it. Because I, at first I was just afraid and then I realized, no, this is, this is paranoia. I'm just like thinking all sorts of examples of what could happen when in reality, that's not probably what would happen. So yeah, I was paranoid and it's not something that I'd been feeling recently. The only reason this came up is because I was asking, you know, praying for something where I was feeling discomfort so I could let go of it. And a lot of the times that happens um, when you finally just relax and you're asking for it, uh, the spirit, God, source, whatever, brings things up for you to let go of them. Uh, that's why every, when everything's going great for you, sometimes things happen that you really uh, don't expect and get angry about um, because it's God trying to, or God source, you know, trying to clear things out for you um, so that you can start to attract the stuff that you're supposed to be attracting. You know, if you got rid of all your samskaras, I don't even know if that's possible, but if you got rid of all of them, you'd be attracting a much better world. You know, you wouldn't keep attracting all these things that are stressing you out. Uh, but it takes, it takes bravery, you know, to sit there in those feelings. So here's another example of a trigger I had. I opened a bag of flour and there were a bunch of maggots like larva in there. And I am afraid of bugs. That's why I mentioned the butterfly moth thing. Um, so I closed it quickly and I realized that I was having a lot of this anxiety. This, is, this had happened just right after I was uh, looking at the Michael Singer video series. So I knew what I should do um, and I did not necessarily want to do this, but I, I did because I know that releasing the samskaras means I'm not going to have this uh, terror happen again. So I went into my room and I laid down on the bed and I just felt uh, the fear. Um, I laid there just noticing my heart was really pounding, uh, you know, how, how else am I feeling? Where's the blood rushing and, you know, to my head and thinking and all this stuff. I was just thinking about that and how terrified I felt. And it was like 10 to 15 minutes, you know, just being in terror. I'm not going to say that's really nice. It's not pleasant. Um, but as I was there, I was thinking, after a while, after I was letting this come to the surface and not trying to push it away as I normally would have, I was thinking to myself, you know, what was I really afraid of? What, what is the end result? What was I thinking? What was I catastrophizing here? What did I think was the worst, worst thing that could happen here? And I realized that even the worst thing I could think of didn't, it wouldn't have felt as scary or terrifying as the feelings that I was feeling right now in bed and I realized that definitely was catastrophizing. I was definitely making it out to be more than it would have been and I realized that I was handling it. So I was so afraid about whatever could have happened but here I was handling what was obviously more scary, more terrifying, my thoughts about what could have happened were more terrifying. You know, these feelings that were inside of me were more terrifying than the actual event that I was worrying about. Um, a lot of people had that with, uh, with Trump winning. That's just another point. There was a lot of, um, I see these Democrats on like Twitter and they're like, you know, I was really afraid when Trump won originally. And then they saw four years and they're like, none of the things I was afraid of was going to happen. That's the thing. People catastrophize uh, they get told a lot of things and then they catastrophize. They think, wow, this is going to be like awful, the worst thing ever. And then they really um, get worried about it or scared about it. And then you realize that, hey, that it really wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. So I was catastrophizing 
uh, of whatever I thought the bugs would do. Uh, and it really wasn't as bad as what I was experiencing, what I was putting on myself. I mean, there was nothing going on when I was lying in bed. There was no, no danger, no immediate danger. I was just feeling these feelings. And then I realized I'm doing this. I'm handling the fear. And then I realized this fear is like worse than anything in my life that could happen. The fear was just the worst that could happen to me. That, it, that's that saying, you know, the only thing to fear is fear itself. When I realized that, I was like, well, for one thing, I'm capable. You know, I felt invincible in that moment. I'm capable because I'm handling this fear right now and nothing could be worse than this fear right now. So I'm definitely capable of handling whatever life throws at me. And it's just so empowering to do that, to feel that way. And I wished that for other people, part of the reason why I'm doing this video. So if we would allow our triggers and just sit there, sit there with them and feel them and listen to them because they're just telling us something, it's just like, pay attention to me, you know? And you pay attention and then it leaves. And then you're not going to attract those situations in the same way. You're going to deal with things differently. You're not going to be as afraid or as angry. Um, another thing happened to me today and I just sat there with it for a few minutes. And it, it's not, it, I'm not saying it's going to be all like 15 minute sessions of pure terror. I was just uncomfortable. I felt, um, I don't like recommending something to people and having that thing that I recommended not work out or be annoying or be evil or something, you know? I don't like that association like, hey, I thought this was a good thing and then it turns out it's, it's not. I don't like recommending something that doesn't turn out right. It's a weird, uncomfortable feeling for me when I hear that something I recommended didn't work for somebody else. But I should understand also that those people are attracting that thing that either worked or did not work for them. Um, but I wanted to deal with this emotion because it's come up in the past and I know that. And I just sat there and dealt with it. And I realized the way I interact after this uh, to the person that I recommended this to is a lot easier. Um, you come from a different standpoint when you're not acting emotionally, I guess is my point. There are a lot of people right now who are acting on emotion, not acting on logic. And it would behoove them to deal with their emotions. And once the emotional charge is let go, as the samskar is let go, then you can think a little bit more rationally, calmly, and people will interact with you in a different way also. And that's great. That's, that's what you want. You don't want to be acting emotionally, you know, with your samskaras and stuff, because all you're doing is like, you're, you're gathering in this emotion, you're rejecting it and pushing emotion out. And the other person, well, you're probably attracting somebody who's doing the exact same thing in their own different perspective and way. And it's not a very good emotional, emotional um, interaction between people. So it's a lot more calm to actually deal with your samskaras yourself. So I think that's about all I wanted to do in this video is just explain how to deal with it, sit with your emotions, let them come up, and why. And the why is because now the things that would have triggered me in the future will not trigger me as much or at all in these situations because I've already dealt with the emotional charge and I'm no longer resisting it. It's the resistance that is causing it to persist. You know, what you resist persists. And I've never seen anything more true than that. People are pushing against things and they're just getting more of it. You know, I mentioned this in the past, people were gonna push against the anti-vaxxers and what happened? Two years and now I've got so many more you know, if you want to get rid of something, you don't focus and push against that other person. You have to go inside and work on yourself so that you're not attracting these situations anymore. 
I'll leave a couple of links below if you want to research more and listen to my thoughts on more of these things in the same topic. But I hope that you enjoyed this and that it's helped you. Thanks and have a great day.